have a little over 120 team members um, and we're growing very quickly, which is exciting for us. We have helped and worked with over 300 active customers in the past 12 months, um, but we have been in business for 27 years. And during that time, um, we have been awarded a Microsoft Partner of the Year two times and have developed relationships with um, enough customers that we're 90% referenceable, which is awesome. We have 14 gold and silver Microsoft competencies, and we've completed over 1,300 projects in the past five years. Um, and on top of that, we've been voted best place to work three separate times. Um, so that's a little bit about Journey Team and what we're about. And then finally, um, we are a full stack Microsoft partner. And so within that, um, we have six different practices. Um, our ERP practice, which we're going to talk a little bit about today, our CRM practice, our cloud collaboration and content, content, data and BI, and then change management and adoption. Um, and so you can see on this slide all of the different areas that fit into each of those practices and really why we're able to be a full stack partner. Um, and so with that, today we're going to be talking more about um, our ERP team uh, and our Power BI team. Um, so Mark, if you are ready, I will let you take it away um, and share your screen. Uh, I'm Mark Colley. As Lisa mentioned, I have been an ERP consultant um, with, uh, with BI or with a journey team for about six months. Um, Maggie Jensen is our PI, uh, Power BI uh, developer who actually developed uh, most of the product that, uh, that I'm going to be talking uh, mainly about this morning. I, I spent about 11 or 12 years actually in financial systems, uh, design, development, consulting, so forth, and then about 10 years in, in uh, information systems management uh, with uh, a lot of data warehousing and business intelligence experience. Uh, in fact, I've, I've got exposure to, uh, to Cognos and uh, Oracle BI and MicroStrategy um, and now Power BI. Uh, but uh, my last uh, uh, stint was about eight years as a senior financial executive at healthcare at a healthcare data analytics company, uh, where we used both Oracle to start with and then MicroStrategy. So I, I bring some diverse um, perspective uh, to this topic and hope that that'll be helpful. Uh, Maggie, do you want to introduce yourself just for a second? Yeah, absolutely. I am Maggie Jensen. I am from Utah. I've been working with Journey Team for the last couple of years. Um, this is kind of my um, principal project, working with BC and integrating that into Power BI, including creating some default reports, making the data flow a little bit simpler, um, and just making it really user friendly so that we can get companies in and using their data immediately. Um, I uh, graduated from BYU. I've worked in um, film. Well, uh, doing de doing analytics and film, I've worked as a web developer and worked in accounting as um, an accounting clerk a couple of years ago. So I've had some fun experience in kind of dabbling in different fields that have given me a good context for looking at the BC data. So I love Journey team. Happy to be here. Great. Thanks, Maggie. We're, we're glad you're here as well. Uh, Let's go ahead and get started. I just want to give a brief overview of current, uh, sort of the current state of, uh, of the BI world and some of the issues that, uh, that are, are current in this topic. And um, recently, uh, IDG came out with an article, I think in 2019, uh, talked about you know, what's driving the interest in, in uh, uh, investments in data initiatives and, and business intelligence. And, and they sort of identified about nine common goals that a lot of different uh, companies who are investing in data initiatives uh, identified. Uh, and if you look down this list here of these nine items, obviously people could pick more than one category to, to put their interest in, but um, you you're probably can see your own uh, interest uh, in, in some of the things that, that have driven you to, to explore this topic or maybe even to join this uh, this call, and, and that's obviously a desire, uh, like it says here, to improve decision making, making to maybe improve your security, uh, to improve productivity in a couple of areas, um, you know, help with product definition, uh, improve your customer or employee experiences, uh, you know, reduce time to market. All of these kinds of things were were reasons why companies are looking to invest in in uh, data initiatives such as business intelligence, including Power BI. 
But if you sort of look at that and, and sort of delve into your own thought process, I'll bet you that there's just two or three of them that you're really focused on. Uh, why? Where's your interest coming from? And and one of them that we hear a lot is, I need a single source of truth. We have other data systems, disparate systems, uh, other databases, and and sometimes it's hard to get to. Sometimes they don't agree with each other. I, I want to go one place that has the truth and that I can rely on. Uh, and if I need data from other sources, I want to be able to efficiently and quickly be able to bring those other uh, databases and silos uh, in in order to leverage the financial data that I've got. Uh, and the reason why is because obviously we want to find hidden insights, make better decisions, improve our productivity and our, and our overall uh, corporate experience. So that's sort of what's driving our interest. Uh, this slide is based upon a, a Gartner uh, study from February of this year in which they, they put out their magic quadrant for uh, BI platforms. Uh, and as you can see from this, um, uh, Microsoft is considered a, whoops, a leader in this area. And uh, they have been for, for several years. And you can see other names, obviously, that you might recognize. A lot of people use Tableau. Uh, I mentioned that I've used Oracle and MicroStrategy uh, and Cognos, which is an IBM product and now the Microsoft BI platform. But uh, Gartner identified Microsoft as the leader in this quadrant, and they, they called our product uh, uh, comprehensive and visionary. It has massive market reach. I need to turn that off. Sorry, I can't seem to get rid of that laser pointer. There we go. Um, but the uh, the factors that distinguish BI now uh, are things like cloud services. So like the Azure cloud or, or other data services, SaaS services, um, and especially what's called augmented analytics, which is artificial intelligence, machine learning. You may have heard of natural language queries. All of those things that, that help uh, facilitate uh, the generation of insights from data. One of the key observations, though, is this last bullet down here that says uh, data visualization capabilities are no longer differentiating. In other words, uh, just because you've got fancy graphics and pretty colors and, and uh, neat ways of displaying data uh, isn't really what differentiates these platforms anymore. Those things are all commodities. Everybody has them. And so uh, these other factors are what make uh, the difference between where BI platforms are categorized in, in the quadrant. Uh, Gartner's uh, conclusions were, just as I was saying right now, that, that everybody can build interactive dashboards with common vi uh, visualizations uh, using a wide range of data sources. Almost all of these vendors do that. Um, and, and as I mentioned earlier, the, most of the new spending, the new initiatives are based upon cloud deploy deployments and soft software as a service. What differentiates these offerings is how well these platforms uh, support the new uh, ideas about augmented uh, services, including machine learning and artificial intelligence. And uh, another author from Datanami said, the real action in the BA market is around augmented analytics Microsoft is far and away the leader, and it's been that way for four or five years now. Gartner also basically said that there are 12 uh, capabilities that are critical to making uh, uh, BI platforms competitive and effective. Um, and they're all listed here, uh, things that you would probably expect, you know, they're secure, they're manageable, uh, they're in the cloud, they have, you know, special uh, uh, analytics capabilities. Um, you can connect to multiple data sources. It, it's easy to get your data ready for the, for uh, for analysis. Um, these tools need to have a catalog so you know what the content of, of uh, all possible content is in in your implementation. Uh, to help with uh, automated insights, as we mentioned before, with the natural language query and la natural language generation, those kinds of things. Uh, what's called data storytelling, and I think we have another member of our BI team doing a, a seminar 
uh, today, well, yesterday and today on uh, telling your story with data, your company's story with data. Um, the ones that I've highlighted here in yellow are the ones I'm going to focus on more in this session um, about Power BI uh, as, it's, uh, as it's linked with Business Central and, and how it kind of uh, really highlights these four areas uh, uh, to make it easy to use and make it a very, very powerful uh, combination of tools. So why would we combine Power BI and Business Central? Uh, number one, these Microsoft offerings are, are all available in the Azure cloud. Uh, and, uh, but, but BI is also available in a desktop version or a server-based uh, uh, premised solution if that's what your preference is. But the real growth and development and power is, is in the cloud uh, and its ability to pull together disparate kinds of things. The other reason why is Power BI has a massive install base, uh, over 80,000 Power BI customers. And finally, uh, linkage with the other items or the other uh, offerings in the Microsoft platform, including Office and Teams, uh, Azure Cloud, so you can embed Power BI um, uh, visualizations and so forth in these other Microsoft link tools, not the least of which is Business Central. So if you are a Business Central user right now, uh, you may recognize, and I'll show a sample of one of these, some of the things that, that uh, you could put into Business Central right now with Power BI. But it, it opens up a whole other world when you combine these two things together, and we're going to talk about the details of that. Um, a couple of other reasons why you would want to link up Power BI and BC uh, with a kind of offering that we're going to talk about today. And that is that, that because Microsoft Power BI is, is a leading um, competitor in this area and uh, has such you know, tremendous robust functionality and it comes at an extremely low cost. So the, the power to price ratio uh, is, is a is a great benefit because it offers virtually everything that you'd need um, in, a, in a very good environment um, at a very low cost relative to some of the other producers. Um, and finally, the biggest reason maybe is that it extends your ability to report business central financial data uh, and analysis capabilities to uh, in other ways, to be able to distribute reports differently, to combine other data, and just augment your general financial data picture. So I said, uh, those of you who might be Business Central consumers right now, um, this is a, a page uh, picture of the landing page in Business Central when you first come in. And, and those of you who are familiar may recognize this Cronus USA is the, the Business Central fictitious company that they use to, to demonstrate and, and uh, test and do things. And, and this automatically comes in your environment if you're a BC um, um, licensee. But at the very bottom of this landing page, I've taken a, a, a snapshot of this. You, you may have noticed in this insights section, there's a, a space here for Power BI reports. So linking up BC and BI, you could embed a Power BI reports right in your landing pages of, of, uh, of Business Central. So that's one nice feature. What we're going to do today is, is talk about a new offering that Journey Team has put together uh, to facilitate uh, the linking of Power BI with Business Central. And you know, it's sort of what we call an on-ramp to, to using those two together. It's a quick start that allows you to kind of jumpstart the whole process without making an enormous investment in analysis and time to get started. And uh, so it's an exciting offering that we're, we're uh, pleased to be able to bring and talk about today. So what are the synergies that you're going to get from this? First, and we'll talk about these in a little bit of depth uh, uh, as we continue through this presentation, but data ingestion. What this, this new template uh, model that we're calling it, the Power BI BC template model, is a powerful uh, means of ingesting data into Power BI for analysis. First of all, it will give you access to all BI financial data 
uh, easily without having to, to handle the complexities of the dataverse. Um, this process is a packaged model that automatically um, downloads more than 30 primary business central tables into a single data set within Power BI. In addition to that, there are capabilities to uh, bring in external data sources. So for example, if you've got uh, an order management system or a warehouse management system or a CRM or virtually any other um, operational type of database, um, if, if you can query that database and get a connection there, we can bring it in and merge it with the business central um, data set to allow you to, to you know, create new ratios and new, new visualizations and new relationships uh, that give you better insights into the operation of your company. Um, Power BI in, incorporates a, a very powerful uh, tool to bring in that data, to connect it, uh, to make the connections between each table uh, and the key values. Uh, to transform that data, to choose which columns you're going to work with, to perhaps combine columns into to a couple of data uh, elements into a single element or vice versa, divide what might be a complex element into two or three uh, pieces to make it easier to analyze, to standardize your data, to validate it. it is, it's a, an enormously powerful tool and, and having seen a few of these in my career, uh, I can tell you that this is a huge advantage to, to be able to have a tool like this one. Uh, while these, these, uh, the data sets or the, the data tables that you bring in are being modeled, Power BI records all the steps that you're taking. So as you're, you're bringing in the data and, and, uh, and merging things together and relating things and, and, and creating uh, measures and so forth, it is recording those steps so that it is completely auditable uh, it's easily tested, it's easily modified because you can see all the steps that were taken and if something was done out of order, you can change it and, and, uh, and adjust it to do something different. Um, the model that we're going that we're offering includes uh, about 70 uh, predefined measures. Um, all of the data connections between the business central tables are brought in automatically and, and already set up for you. so that's nothing that you have to worry about. And Power BI has very efficient data refreshes. So uh, these refreshes are full, they're not incremental. Um, and depending upon the, the style of license that, uh, that you're using, whether it's a pro or premium, it'll automatically refresh the data on a schedule, either eight times a day or 48 times a day. And you can do that as frequently as every 30 minutes. So you can have near real time data at your fingertips from virtually everything that's in Business Central, uh, plus whatever other data sources you may want to bring in and merge with that. And as I've pointed out with the example in just the previous page, these visualizations can be embedded within Business Insights on the landing page there, or you can bring them into Teams or, or CRM or SharePoint or other kinds of applications that you may be using very easily. So let's uh, let's get into a little bit more detail about uh, about the Quick Start program. I'm going to outline for you exactly what uh, what this model is. Uh, first of all, it is a Business Central extension that we put into your client instance, just like any other extension that you may you may bring in for other purposes in Business Central. This is just another extension. Um, this model includes all of the data flows that are needed to set up uh, that data in your tenant workspace. Uh, you get a what's called a PBIX file, which is the the I don't know exactly what the right technical term is, but it's a file uh, that uh, that comes out of uh, a Power BI that basically includes everything in your uh, your data set. So. It includes the, the queries to, to download the 30 plus business central tables, and those include master files as well as transaction files, all the detail that you would need in order to, to do financial reporting. Um, this PBIX file includes the selection of all the data columns. 
the data is automatically cleaned, transformed, uh, standardized, etc. Uh, and it creates all of the data connections between those 30 tables for you automatically. And as I mentioned earlier, there are 70 some odd measures that are already predefined uh, for reporting and analysis. Um, it also includes uh, about a half a dozen pre-built what we will call standard reports, and I'm going to show you each of those. But each of those half dozen uh, data uh, reports point directly to the data set which has just come in through the extension which has created web services, uh, which you know tie to the PBX file that build the content of all of these things. So it really is a, a quick start base model to bring in everything from BC that you might possibly want um, at, at a, a fixed fee for that package. In addition to that, we offer services to help set that up. If you don't have the technical resources to, to install it and to, to configure it properly um, and any customizations that may be uh, required uh, will always be uh, estimated and then quoted uh, to see if that fits fits your situation. So, the other kinds of things that you might need assistance on would be customization of account schedule based financial reports. So, for example, uh, those of you who may be familiar with Business Central know that uh, it has a good reporting package inside Business Central, and uh, there are two basic kinds of reports. There's sort of the list reports that that uh, just kind of dump data out in, in pre-formatted uh, columnar reports. But there's also the, the account schedules which produce your financial reports. And, uh, and those account schedules are based upon uh, the way that you've put together your account categories and subcategories and the, and the accounts that you have in your chart of accounts. There's sort of a sequence of events that have to happen there to define an account schedule. And if you've run account schedules, um, in, in BC, you know that uh, once you've run one and, and maybe you want to see it a little differently, you might have to go back and build a new column layout uh, in order to get what you want and, and move some things around. Um, you might need to use filters to select certain elements that you, of your chart of accounts or account categories you want to see, or you may want to bring in dimensions and start filtering them. But so there's there's some uh, obviously, a lot of customization that, that as a client you have done in order just to create your basic financial statements. So yeah, in order to sort of accommodate those unique things about every business that are reflected in their account schedules, we offer assistance with customizing um, uh, reports coming out of BI that, that go above and beyond what your account schedules can, can, can currently do very easily. So it vastly increases the flexibility of what you can do with financial reporting. Uh, we offer consulting services as well to help define and develop any new reports uh, that you may not uh, uh, have or be able to do or that would combine data from other databases, uh, other data in, into the single data set uh, to, to create dashboards and so forth. Anything that would be you know, over and above the, the core offering uh, that, uh, that you want assistance with to build uh, new new analyses. Also, when you're bringing in uh, external data sources, uh, sometimes you may need some help with doing that. That that can get a little complex, but but uh, you know if you want to bring in new new data flows and define some new measures that are based upon that, you know the some of the the data elements in your third party databases that you're bringing in. Uh, we can help do that as well. Um, one of the challenges that bringing in other data and trying to merge it with BC is sometimes, if you've ever done this before, you get data data conflicts, meaning one system says this and another system says that. And uh, you don't want to have to be resolving those things uh, after the reports have been produced. So inside uh, uh, Power BI, we can actually create trust logic to determine if there's a data conflict, which one is prioritized? Which one takes precedence? And then finally, Journey Time can also help you with your report distribution strategies. So, um, you know, how, how are you going to distribute these reports? Are you going to use mobile uh, applications? Um, 
you know, to we have to layer in security because not everybody should see every re report. Uh, we can help tailor uh, your reporting to specific authorized people or audiences and just work with that uh, with help you define what those strategies are and how you want to uh, proceed. Um, I'm a person who loves visualizations and thinks that a, a picture uh, shows a thousand words, but uh, so I wanted to show you this. This is a nice di diagram that Maggie came up for us to help illustrate exactly what the template model is and what it contains. We've talked through it. I've, I've showed you the verbiage in the slides, but sometimes a picture helps put that in perspective. So on the far left, the, the blue circles, you see um, that's that represents Business Central and the Business Central database. So the template model will create an extension that you put inside Business Central and it automatically adds the web services needed to draw the data out of Business Central into Power BI for you. Those web services uh, include a couple of data flows, but, but uh, primarily there's a staging data flow that, that pulls the 30 tables, the 30 plus tables in Business Central with the data that's, that we consider essential and standard uh, and brings it into tables in Power BI. Power BI then transforms that with a second data flow into the data that's usable in the Power BI uh, data set, uh, where you know it it can take columns and and uh, divide them or add them together or you know put other kinds of things in there to make the data meaningful from a visualization and reporting standpoint and creates that base data set from which then all of the Power BI reports uh, can, can be driven. So in, in those reports themselves, the half dozen that we talked about or so are part of this model and packaged with this offering. Mark, in, if I could add something. Yes. Yeah, so we've made this really customizable at every aspect. So from the very beginning, when we're looking at what web services we need to access um, through just our basic staging queries, the initial pulling of those in, even the transformation, um, if you want to replace values, if you need the data to appear a certain way, um, and even through the data set, we've made each step of this highly customizable. So if you or you want us um, to go in and say we want these specific tables visible, we want to add a an extra piece of BC that we can play around with and see the data from. Um, all of this is very highly customizable, including that additional data sources like Mark pointed out. Um, if you have other sources of data you want to pull in, that's also very, um, very available. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Maggie. That's a great point. And uh, uh, and I'll emphasize it another way, and that is that that uh, the model this package that we're talking about uh, includes all of these elements. So if you already have a team of data scientists, BI experts who know BI, um, you can take this and, and it jumpstarts you. So you don't, have to, you don't have to have done all of this analysis of the BI table, the BC tables to figure out how to get them in and what are we gonna do with them and what does it look like when it comes out. That work's already been done for you. It's ready to go if you wanna change it and you've got the uh, the skilled uh, the people in your staff who can do these kinds of things, they can go in and they've jump started this. You don't have to make that investment in time and, and they can make changes themselves to, uh, uh, to customize it for your situation, uh, as well as bring in your outside data. If you, if you need to augment those skills or you don't have those skill sets, that's where we can come in and, and help uh, uh, do those very things that Maggie was talking about, make those changes, add additional data, uh, customize it for your circumstances. Okay, so I'm just going to show you a couple of things inside Power BI. If you've not seen it before, uh, I just want to illustrate a couple of things. Uh, so this is, if you'll notice on this this picture, there's on the left hand side, there are three symbols. One is looks like a, a bar graph, the other looks like an Excel spreadsheet, and then the other looks like a data model. Those are the three basic portions of, of Power BI. So the top one is reporting. Uh, and I'm going to show you some of those standard reports we talked about in just a second. But I wanted to show you these other two views just very, very quickly so you get a sense for what's inside Power BI. 
So the, we're looking at the Excel uh, table looking thing. Uh, and this is basically the, the, uh, uh, the process of bringing in the data of, and uh, transforming it is all done with, within this kind of a screen and these table or these uh, function options, menu options at the top here. So right in the middle, you'll see one that's highlighted that says table tools. There's six or seven uh, icons there for doing things and getting data from multiple sources. So there's all kinds of ways to get data in uh, into BI to work with. Once you've got it in, the couple of boxes to the right are the transformation tools, uh, and then you know, and then there's other things that we can do with it in terms of managing relationships, which would be the the bottom modeling show uh, thing that's shown there. But but this is a very uh, intuitive tool that helps you to to get data in quickly and then be able to transform it or shape it the way you need to in order to make sense. Uh, the, the Excel like table that you show here is basically all the columns in a particular table um, and it goes way off to the right. But this tool can be used to eliminate columns, sort it, uh, make new columns uh, to make measures and so forth like that. You can't see off to the right because the, the screen wasn't big enough, but um, you, there are other things off to the right that allow you to uh, to do these transformations to track that that audit trail that I talked about about what you're doing to this data so it can be replicated. It's a very very intuitive tool. The bottom one, which has the modeling uh, uh, symbol on it, there with looks like tables that are joined, looks like this. If I click into that. And this looks just like a, a, a data uh, entity relationship diagram, for example, but it'll show all the tables that have been brought into BC, their, their connections, which have been already predefined for you to the other tables, so how they relate to these other tables. Um, and, and off to the right, there are other things that you could select and bring in here and relate to this. Uh, you could bring in additional third party databases or you know, your other systems, subsystems data and, and merge it into this same thing if you can relate it to the tables that are in here. Very intuitive, very graphical interface that makes it, you know, very efficient to use in terms of building out your, your overall Power BI modeling. So let's talk about some actual examples uh, from this. So uh, as I mentioned, there are, are standard and customized reports. We're going to show you the standard reports first. Um, these are the six, six kinds of reports and visualizations that are automatically included. A trial balance, a balance sheet, and an income statement. There's another kind of balance sheet. Um, those are two different reports, actually, balance sheet and income statement. Um, and then some visualizations are what you might call a dashboards. So these are, you know, these are more kind of uh, list kinds of reports with a lot of capabilities. I'm going to show you those on the on the left, the financial statements. The visualizations are, you know, a little prettier, a little more colorful, and uh, and helps to drive insights for uh, specific areas like an executive or an inventory manager or sales manager or an accounts payable manager or a, a accounts receivable and collections manager. Dashboards can be built for all of those. So this is the trial balance. It's not real exciting, but it's kind of a fundamental accountant's tool. Um, just it's going to list all of the accounts um, in in columns. The neat thing about this is if you were to run a trial balance in Business Central, you've got to pick a date, you've got to tell it what columns you want, and then you can run the report and it spits out a nicely formatted but static report. This one here is very configurable right inside this view. So notice right here on the upper right hand corner, there's a what we call a date slider. So you can pick that and slide it to whatever month or period of time that you want to look at. And the trial balance will uh, almost instantaneously reflect the data from that date that you slid to. These columns are configurable and you can bring in other columns very easily, you know, move them around. Uh, do a calculation such as net change or uh, a variance like we've got depicted here, even with a little graphical bar that shows the magnitude of those changes and whether they're positive or negative, green or red, all that kind of stuff. These, these columns are very configurable if you want to do another view, if you want different time periods, if you want to bring in a budget to compare to, if you want to bring in 
you know, whatever might make sense on a trial balance. Uh, the nice thing here is it's at your fingertips. The data is already in here. You don't have to go to BC and, and try to generate a different kind of trial balance uh, if, you want a, if you want a different period of time or something. You don't have to create different columns. So a lot of flexibility within, uh, within Power BI to do those basic accounting functions. Here's a balance sheet, kind of similar in appearance, but has some pretty unique things in it. Again, the date slider allows you to pick whatever date, period, quarter, year you're looking for. Um, but inside the, the table that's here, again, these columns are very configurable in terms of what you really want to see here, budgets or um, forecasts or anything of that nature you could you could put into this. Um, in addition, you'll notice that that underneath the uh, black bar where it says account category last year, et cetera, et cetera, those account categories are are the account categories and subcategories that your company set up when you were building account schedules. So this reflects your specific way that your company has defined uh, the way your financial statements need to look and how they add up. <coughs> Excuse me. In addition to that, you'll notice that the, the little squares next to the, the names on each of these accounts have pluses or minuses, meaning I can drill into it, I can drill back out of it. It's a hierarchy that allows you to see the detail you want to. Um, you could filter this as well to see just certain accounts. A uh, lot of flexibility to do things right within this one page. If you were in BC, you could do some of these things. It's just going to take you a little bit longer because you're going to have to define a different column to match with this account schedule or a different uh, period of time that you have to go back out, select it, rerun your report, or um, you know, if you want to filter by dimensions, you wouldn't necessarily do that on balance sheets, but you know, that, that's the concept is it's all done here it's in your fingertips in one window without having to do too much to, to leave to go generate a new report. Income statements, same kind of thing. Uh, the, the date selections, uh, you've got uh, hierarchies built in here uh, with drill down capabilities and drill up capabilities, filtering, all kinds of things that you can do here, again, in one view. Um, a question came up earlier uh, about how do, you, how do you see these inside Power BI? Well, if you'll notice down at the bottom, there are a number of tabs. This works kind of like an Excel spreadsheet tab. So if I were to click on information, that was, I didn't want to click on information because I can't go backwards here, but information was that first tab that listed uh, the six or seven reports that are standard in here. This was our trial balance tab. So if I were in Power BI and I clicked on that, it would go to that first standard report that I showed you balance sheet would go to that one and so forth. We we're on the income tab. If I clicked on these other ones, there's the other balance by dimension. We're not going to show that one today, but if I clicked on ones like this, executive inventory manager or sales manager, those are the dashboards that I referred to, those other visualizations. So let's go to that now. Let's pretend like I'm going to click on the executive one. No, let's not. That'll be just a second. I did want us to talk about Custom, customizations based upon your account schedule reports before I get to the visualizations. Um, if you're experienced with Business Central and you know about your account schedules, you can you know, run reports based on dimensions and you can change columns as we talked about. But, but if, you, if you have account schedules, you can do a lot more with them that may, may not be apparent. We can build reports, custom reports based upon the set of dimensions that you like to see together with those same drill down capabilities and, and sorting and filtering that we talked about. We already talked about uh, date columns being more intuitive and, and those kinds of things. Let me show you an example of, of one of the custom reports that, that we've created for another client that are based upon account schedules, but you may not recognize that when you see it. Here, for example, is a, is a performance report or a profit and loss kind of a report uh, for uh, a particular period of time. Now, notice that we've got some dimensions across the top here, a company, a branch, which could be a cost center for you, or a responsibility center, or a, a grouping of customers, or a grouping of whatever interests you, uh, as well as uh, dates that you could select. 
Um, but this is a performance report that's brought in data, not just from BC, but combined it with, uh, with some data from their other subsystems that was merged into this um, Power BI model. So they've, they've created, been able to create some new ratios and some new things to measure uh, that are based upon their KPIs that they want to look at. But notice that there's also two different uh, reports in this one page. So multiple reports can be shown and linked together in the same page in BI to show you what you want to see. So this is a case where the account schedules drive uh, some of these listings over here because these are just accounts, chart of accounts types of accounts, but it's automatically brought in the dimensions that you want to see and the date periods that you want to look at, and you can instantly select different sets of those right here on this page uh, without having to rerun a report. Here's another example of a similar kind of thing, a sales and commissions report where we brought in BC data, we brought in all the dimensions related to it, we brought in some additional data uh, from their sales subsystem and done some calculations. This allows this client to actually calculate their commissions from within Power BI and run reports off of that that can be accessed by those who are authorized to see this kind of data. Uh, these can be secured with permissions and and, uh, and kept you know, very tight if that's what's needed. Um, but again, this gives you tremendous flexibility in what you wanna see here, your ability to bring in other data to augment this, and your ability to slice it and dice it through any of the dimensions that are relevant to your company and all on one page. Now let's go to the dashboards that I was referring to before. Um, Typically, these are kinds of things that are, are customized for a certain role, executive management, financial management, sales management, inventory, um, accounts receivable and collections, those kinds of things. And they would likely include the KPIs for that function in the company. And that's what these are designed to do. So when we look at the uh, executive dashboard, for example, you know, here's the kinds of things that you might see on an executive dashboard. Um, this is sort of what we built uh, to illustrate it, but any of these things could be changed and customized to fit your business and your executive team for what they want to see. Uh, notice that you know there's a number of variety of, uh, of uh, visualizations here. Some just de depicts a balance or a number from uh, the period of time you're looking at. You know some of these are kind of clever, illustrating other kinds of relationships, whether they're trending or comparisons of things. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that can be done here and a lot of different visualizations. Let's go to the sales dashboard. Uh, same kind of layout, there's a lot of different things like this, but some additional new graphics. Who are our top customers? Uh, where are they located? Um, you can drill into these to find out even greater detail and so forth. So some really slick things that can be done with dashboarding in, in these kinds of visualizations. Uh, for those functions. Same thing true with an inventory dashboard manager. So these can all be done, as we mentioned, for whatever functions that you want to come up with. Uh, these are built out there. They can be used as is, uh, or you modif take it and modify it for, for one that you might use instead, or add other visualizations and graphics. Again, this is, this is probably what draws most people's attention to this, the variety of graphics and the colors and all of that. Um, and, and Power BI does a phenomenal job of, of uh, uh, having all of those capabilities, but most of BI tools now do. You know, Tableau is kind of fun, because, kind of famous because they have a lot of visualizations. Virtually all of them have those now. So it's the other, other facets that make Power BI and marrying it directly to Business Central that make this such a powerful combination. So why would we want to marry up Power BI with Business Central? Power BI in the clouds is massively scalable and extremely stable, ubiquitous, always available. Um, 
it would eliminate the need to have multiple platforms that you might have to manage separately. Uh, it reduces what's commonly called an analytics chaos, where you've got so many moving parts, you can't keep them all in sync. Power BI and BC are meant to work together seamlessly. And with the model that, that uh, Maggie and her team th that she works with have developed is, uh, is meant to facilitate that and get you started running very, very quickly. It does enhance security because it's a centralized Microsoft security model and the permissions can be set, like I, said, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, to allow uh, or disallow access to any kind of data or you know, any report that's done out there and to help you distribute that only to, the, to those who uh, are authorized to see that data. Um, this, again, I can't overemphasize this, automatically brings in all the BC central data that you would need in your instance without you having to do weeks and weeks of work to figure that out to begin with. Uh, it, it manages the data integration process if you're wanting to bring in other data sets from subsystems and merge them into a single source of truth that you can then do all of your reporting off of. Obviously improves decision making. Uh, allows you, I mentioned this earlier, but I want to em emphasize that the rapid refreshes. So you can do this you know, on a, usually, you know, eight times a day, but if you need more than that, 48 times a day, every single half an hour, 24 by seven, uh, each each uh, refresh only takes a few minutes. Uh, so you can typically do most of these every half an hour, um, you know, on really, really busy times. If you had huge amounts of data, you know, maybe you can't do it every half an hour, maybe it's every hour, but those capabilities are there. They're all scheduled. You don't have to watch it, it just happens. And finally, it, this combination is going to empower your users with, with data at their fingertips. If you have power users, uh, they'll kind of become your citizen analysts. Uh, and when you get a lot of people looking at the uh, data that's, that's useful and current, uh, obviously insights are greatly enhanced and, and improves the performance and productivity of your employee base uh, and, your, and your company.